So in this video we're going to look at how to test the compression of an engine using an amp clamp. Look at that. So make sure you stay till the end. We're going to investigate a couple of faults with this diagnostic check. First of all we'll take a spark plug out so you can see what happens if it's really damaged and then we'll loosen the spark plug off a bit see if it can detect a small compression loss. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and go and check out the rest of the videos. We've got lots of content on automotive diagnostics to help you fix it first time. So I'm going to be using this PicoScope 2204A. If you do check out my videos you know I'm a real big fan of this scope. It's really cheap and it's pretty powerful for what you get. I've also picked up this Handtech CC650 amp clamp and the links for both of these can be found in the description below. So I've already partially set up the car. We're going to take a reading on the main starter battery live and I'm also taking a measurement on the number one ignition coil. You'll see why we, when we take the measurement. So this amp clamp does have two settings. We've got the one millivolt per one amp and one millivolt per 100 milliamps. We're going to go on the one millivolt per one amp. So before you connect the amp clamp to take the reading, it's important that you zero the clamp to get an accurate reading. So we're taking this measurement on a 2018 Fiesta. It's the three cylinder non-turbo engine. I've also disconnected all three injectors to make sure we don't inject any fuel while we're cranking over the engine to take the measurement. So we've got the amp clamp connected up to channel A and we've got the number one ignition coil connected to channel B with the attenuator in place. This is the Handtech attenuator. The link for this is also in the description below. The reason we need this is because we're going to exceed the input range of the scope. So this scope can only take up to 20 volts maximum input. Okay, so we're connected up and ready to go. Um, what I'm gonna do is set the time to 200 milliseconds. We're gonna set channel A to 200 millivolts. And channel B with the ignition coil, we're setting that to 20 volts. So now what we want to do is crank it over for a second or two. So let's have a look what we've got. Let's uh, pause the scope, stop it from running. So let's scroll back through and have a look what we've got. We'll go to my first measurement first. So here we go. We've got the initial increase in current for where the starter motor tries to turn the stationary engine over. That's the hardest work that it's got to do, hence the current goes up. So it goes off the screen, but that's not a problem. We're not interested in that first bit. What we're interested in is these peaks here, okay? Now each one of those peaks represents the cylinder coming up to compression. So as the compression in the cylinder rises, it gets harder for the starter motor to turn the engine, so the current draw increases. You'll probably notice this when you've turned an engine over by hand. What we've also got then is cylinder number one. So by doing it on this three cylinder engine, it's really easy to work out which cylinder has, has got a problem. So what we can do then is pull the cursor down. And probably just around here, Probably after this point here is where we want to look once the engine's got up to its normal cranking speed. And we're looking for, on a good engine, those peaks to be even. If one of those peaks is low, it would indicate that we've got a compression issue. So something quite interesting I actually noticed on this was um, once it cranked over, we can see the increases and drops in compression here and then we get this drop and you could hear it in the engine let's see if it's on another page here these drops and you could actually physically hear that when you were cranking the engine over so it's got variable valve timing on the intake and the exhaust cam Maybe it's making an adjustment to the valve timing as the engine hasn't started yet. Um, possibly if the engine was flooded, it could be allowing a flow through the engine so it can just evaporate that fuel off and get the engine started. If anyone knows exactly what it is, 
let us know in the comments below. But what we can see is that event happens and then it goes away again, which suggests to me it's altering the valve timing to purge out the fuel if it was flooded and get the engine started. Just my theory. Okay, so we've whipped the plug out and we'll have a look what we get now. You'll definitely be able to hear this. So we can see there that we've got the two peaks and one missing. We've got cylinder one identified here by the coil signal and then we've got a peak missing. So that suggests the firing order of this engine is one, two, three. So if you have got an engine that does sound like it's you know, blatantly lost compression on one of the cylinders, this is a really quick check just to confirm which cylinder it is. Um, especially helpful if you're looking at a V8 or a V6 and you could be looking at taking the head off one side or the other. So let's put the plug back in loosely and see if it picks up the compression loss on that cylinder. So I've wound it down and I'm just going to back it off maybe three turns. So let's have a look at what we get. So we'll hit space bar and stop the scope and let's scroll back through and have a look. Ah, I wasn't sure if it was going to pick it up, but if we bring the cursor down here, look at that. So I'm looking from kind of this point onwards where, it, where the amps settle and the engine gets up to speed. We can see our number one cylinder there and then our number two is slightly lower there back to number three, number one here, and look, number two, much lower. And it's the same down here. So when I get around to it, I will be building a website to save all these waveforms. So make sure you subscribe and I'll be sure to let you all know when I do. So quite a good test there then. So why don't you go and check out this video on how to do a misfire ignition coil test next. <laughs>